All right, so now, now we're ready to, to put our coon on a stretcher. Now I'm using wood. I always use wood, uh, especially for raccoon. Uh, it doesn't, you can put them on wire, but the wire stretchers, in my opinion, are kind of a goofy shape and they don't give you a real nice uniform shape on your raccoon. So we're starting off here. I'm just taking it and I'm putting it on there. And we're gonna put, uh, obviously belly on one side, back on the other. And now we just make sure our nose is hooked hooked on there good and tight. We don't want our, we don't, we gotta make sure your nose doesn't pull over like that. Uh, if, it, if it's having trouble staying on there, just take a pin and put a pin in here so that it doesn't, it doesn't pull over. So now I've got it on here. I'm just gonna pull it, pull it nice and snug. And I always start on the, start my pinning on the belly side. So now here's our two legs. And if you remember when we did the skinning video, we kept, we, we, we cut around those legs so we had nice straight lines. So first we're gonna take a pen and I'll start in the middle. And if you've got a center line on your board, uh, that might help, but uh, I don't, I, I know the center. So we'll start, we'll, I'm gonna leave just a, bit, a big enough gap so I can still get my belly wedge in here, but we'll just get this pinned out. I'll do the same on the other leg. I'll go on the inside corner and I'll stretch it stretch it to the right there. So you gotta make sure when you're doing this that you have, maybe you can see it better at this angle. You wanna make sure you've got it pretty evenly spaced here. So now I'm gonna take another pen and put it here on the outside of the leg, do the same on this. We'll go to the outside corner of this leg, put a pin in there. Now get the middle. We don't want this drying up too high. So we'll put a pin in there and one on this side. So now we've got a nice straight line here across the bottom. Our, these are pulled snug. They're not overstretched. They're not super tight. You know, obviously there's, it's still a little loose in here. We don't want it loose, just snug. So pull those down so that they're snug, not super stretched tight. So now we're gonna come to the belly here. And uh, usually when I'm boarding these, I lean them up against the wall and pin them up, but just so that you can see everything at a real good angle, I'm gonna lay it down here like this. So. Now we've got, we've got it on here nice and centered. You gotta make sure your stuff is on here centered. Now, the first thing I do is I come to an edge. I come to my edges and I pull all that loose skin in. We don't want it hanging off the side. So I stick my pin in there and I pull that down until it is snug and put my pin in. Now, I do the same thing on this side. You know, you don't want to pin it so all, there's a bunch of, you know, if I put a pin here, you don't want all this loose stuff hanging off the edge. Bring that in here put that in the window so that the, when the fur buyer is looking at it, they see that and see all that extra fur and it looks real nice. I'll get to that in a minute. So I'm gonna come and put a, pull it tight just like I did the other side and put a pin in. Now you should have a real straight line between these two pins. So when you're doing the rest of this, my next two pins are gonna be besides the tail. So the tail, you don't need to push together much. So you can see here's our tail when it's open. I'm gonna come right in this corner where the tail is and just, uh, just put it in just a little bit from where it regularly sits, but make sure it's in line with these two pins. So we've got that, I'm gonna do the same here. I'll put the pin in and you can see I move it just this way just a little bit so it bunches the fur up right in this area and push the pin in. Now I've got a real nice straight line. Now we'll take two more pins. This is, a, this is what I call, there's two sides, of, uh, there's two board sizes, there's small and large, or I call them medium and large boards. There's only two sizes but this is a small or medium board. Now, I put one pin here. When you got your money cuts, make sure, no, this, the money cuts on this raccoon are pretty small because it is small, it's a small coon. But you wanna make sure you push as much as that, of that money cut fur up into here. So now I'll put two pins in here, around the edge, and we're gonna have a nice straight line. I'll tip that up so you can see it in a minute. But we're gonna do the same thing here. We're gonna put uh, two pins on this side one there, one right here. And now we've got a real nice straight line uh, that is gonna look real presentable. Now, if you've got a little bit of extra money cut skin, just make sure you cut it straight and nice flush. If you, When you're using the bigger boards, I like to use five pins on each side, but for the small board, this is perfect. So hopefully, hopefully you can see that if I tip it up here a little bit, you can see 
that's a nice nice straight line we've got going across there so now the tail uh, there's a couple different ways you can do it you can leave it uh, just like this and just pin it the way it is what I like to do is called pleating the tail now when you plead the tail what you're doing is you're kind of bunching it up so you're slowly putting it up in portions uh, this is very common when you're doing mink if you're doing mink tails too you, have, you also plead the tail um, I'm gonna take a pin I'm gonna go down about an inch and a half and I'm gonna slide the fur up to about an inch I'll stick the pin in. and we're gonna do the same on this side inch and a half pull it up towards about an inch now when you're doing this and you're kind of working back and forth make sure your tail is staying centered don't put your tail way off to the side you know so it, it looks kind of goofy make sure when you're going down um, it's centered that's why if you want you can put center lines on your boards which will help you pin out the legs and the and the back side here and the tail so if you want you can put center lines on your boards uh, when i first started um, i did now i've kind of got the hang of it you kind of know what you're doing after a while that you can just just come up and pin them and it'll be right so again, I'm coming back about, now about an inch and a quarter, and I'm bringing it up an inch. Now you can see, it's getting pretty bubbly in here. When these dry down, they'll dry down. You don't want to overdo it so that it's wrinkled together, you know, kind of goofy like that. But you want it to just, when it dries down, these bumps won't be as big as they are now. So I'm coming back another inch and a quarter, going up to about an inch, maybe three quarter of an inch. And then match, match that on this side. When you're doing this, your pin should always be, always be in sets. Now, I'm gonna do one more set here. We're getting towards the end. I'm gonna do one more set, or set. I'm gonna do about three quarter of an inch, bring it to a half an inch. There you go, three quarter of an inch, bring it to a half an inch. And now we've put one right at the end of the tail so it doesn't curl up. Now that is a very nice pleated tail. Looks good, it's very pretty center. So that that is all the pinning at the base. Now the next thing we're gonna do is come back to the belly. Now, on a male, you're gonna have a penis hole right here. On a female, you can see where we ripped that nipple open in the fleshing video. We've got three sets of nipples. Now, when you're, you have to cut an inspection window in this fur. An inspection window is, is so that the fur buyer can see what kind of fur he's really buying from you. So he can see the fur on the back and really give it a good grade and know what he's getting. You, you gotta make sure you put this inspection window in here. Now, one thing you don't want to do is make it too big. Now, on this raccoon, we're going to come just above these bottom two nipples, the third set, first set, second set, third set. We're going to come right above them, and I'm just going to cut right in. And, of course, I'm using a dull knife. And just get myself a little place to grab and just come in here and glide and make a nice... Now, when we get down to the legs, we're just taking a real thin strip off, about a quarter inch. And we come around the other nipple on the other side and we'll just cut down and get to a real thin strip and cut it off. So now the inspection window, make sure it's, make sure it's centered here. And if you accidentally cut it too big, you can always put pins in so it doesn't dry over the edge. If, if you cut it and it gets kind of goofy, you know, real wide open like this, put some pins in there so it doesn't, it doesn't dry out and really make a huge hole. All the hole should be is about the size of your hand without your thumb. It's plenty big. So even, you know, if it's a little bit skinnier, I mean, I have decent sized hands. So if it's a little skinnier, it doesn't matter, but you don't want a huge hole in there. And make sure you're not coming up too high. When I first started, that was one of my problems. Uh, I later, after my first year, I learned pretty quick when the fur buyer was not that happy that my bellies were all gone. I was coming way up in here. Do, make sure you're not doing that. So. Keep it down there, keep it small. You know, that's the size of my hand. Make it that big. So now we've got that cleaned up. We've got our inspection window cut in there. Looks real nice. Now we're coming here to the front legs. We left them plenty long in the skinning video, if you remember. Now it's kind of hard to see, but when your legs are coming up, they're kind of tapered. And right when they stop tapering and start going straight up, they're coming up, stop, they're going straight up. That's about where you cut them. So you don't want to cut them real short so there's a hole but you don't want them to come too long that it hangs over. If we had just left the legs like this, it would hang over and it wouldn't dry properly underneath. So we're gonna come up right where it stops tapering and gets skinny and we'll cut them off. Just like that. Do the same to this leg, 
come up right where it starts to, stops tapering and starts getting skinny. I'm gonna cut it off. Now you can see the legs, they, they fold down just a little bit. You know, they're not, they're not, uh, they're not completely gone. There's still a little stump there, but there's, there's no hole. That's the main thing. You don't want a hole in here. So I just whack them forward so they're tipped forward. They're gonna tip forward when we hang it up to dry anyhow. But also if you remember, when we did, when we skinned it, we cut off not all of the bottom lip, but most of it. Now we're gonna come up here and just kind of clean this up. We're taking just a little bit off, just so that uh, the bottom mouth looks real nice. We take off the entire bottom lip and we just got a nice little hole. Now, if you've got, depending on your raccoon and how you uh, skinned it around the face, you might have a little bit of cheek meat here. If it's real thick, you can just take your knife and cut that cheek meat off. On this side, you can see there's kind of a big glob right here. We're just gonna kinda just take it and trim it off. No big, so it dries real nice. Now, if, when there's a little bit of meat around the head, it'll dry up for the most part. As you can see, this head is actually kind of just a little bit dry from when I hung it up to dry. But right underneath the ears, when we skinned this coon, it had some big, big globs of, of cheek meat right underneath the ears. So we're gonna take that and just remove it. This side is pretty good. Got that when we were fleshing. So now we've got a nice, we've got a properly boarded raccoon. It could have came up just a little bit higher here underneath the ears. Uh, it's no big deal. That's gonna dry plenty fine. But now never forget when you're, board, when you're using boards, you have to remember your belly wedge. Otherwise, you're gonna have a heck of a time trying to get the coon off the board. So this, this is my belly wedge. Just take it and slide it in and go all the way up to the nose. Make sure you don't push your, push your nose off though because you don't, want, you don't want it to peel off the front like that. You wanna make sure it stays hooked on there. So that is a properly boarded coon. Now, one thing I like to do is just take, I like to take my uh, beaver skinning knife and I just scrape it down. I just run my knife over here and you pick up a little bit of loose fat. Now, when you when you uh, do it cold, when you flesh it when it's cold, you don't have as much. If you flesh it when it's not as cold, you're gonna have a lot of runny grease on there. You can see we picked up a little bit of fat because it was nice and cold. When it's warm, you're gonna have a lot more fat than that. So we'll get this all out of the way here, clean my knife off and throw that away. So now we have a completely properly boarded raccoon. Now I'm gonna hang it up to dry. I hang it by the bottom up and then it'll dry properly for about a week, week and a half. I'm gonna get real close in here so you can once again see, see all the pinning. Hopefully you can see it, how it looks. Obviously nice and straight, a nice V shape here. Oop, pin came a little loose. And just pleat, I just pleated the tail. You don't have to pleat the tail, you can leave it long, but make sure you still pin it down. Just leave it long, however you choose to do it. So we're gonna hang it up and that is a, Completely boarded, properly boarded coon.